You're watching the NWR Investor Conference. It is November 2020. We have Ava Risk Group with us today. Ava provides risk management services and technologies worldwide. The company operates through perimeter security, access control solutions, and international valuable logistics segments. It services clients across the commercial, industrial, military, and government sectors. The group features a range of complementary solutions, including intrusion detection and location for perimeters, pipelines, and data networks, as well as biometrics, card access control, and locking, including secure international logistics, storage of high value assets, and risk consultancy services. We have Rob Broomfield with us today. He is the group CEO. Rob is an experienced business executive with more than 20 years of management experience, with majority of his executive career spent with companies operating in the security industry. Prior to joining Ava Group, he was General Manager of Asia Pacific Vision Systems Limited and spent 10 years with IBM Australia in Australia and the US. In addition to Rob's international sales and marketing success, he has extensive experience in operations management, including product engineering, procurement, manufacturing, and operations. Over to you, Rob. Right. Look, thanks, Laura, and uh, thanks for having us, and thanks for the interest in Ava Risk Group. Uh, please be able to provide an overview of Ava Risk Group, recent performance, and on our areas of strategic focus. First, I'll provide an overview of Ava Risk Group's risk management, technologies and services that are used around the globe. Uh, Ava Risk Group provides services and technologies that protect high-risk valuables, data, and infrastructure globally. We've structured it in two divisions, Ava Technology and Ava Services. The technology division com uh, comprises of future fiber technologies and VQT solutions, whilst international valuable logistics business, Ava Global, makes up the services division. In essence, we provide security services and technologies that protect valuable assets, be it products or information, whilst in transit, be it through physical logistics or contained in long linear fixed assets such as pipelines or data networks. And we protect critical infrastructures on perimeters, the building access points or internal secure compartments within those buildings. We've, um, we, we've built the business up through these divisions. And as you can see, we have a complementary mix of revenue streams and margins. Each company operates towards a higher end of industry margins, reflecting the high quality, the high value they provide. The other important uh, thing to note is the large addressable markets for the company's services and technologies and the large install base of the technology division, which provides a strong base for future recurring revenues from upgrades and comprehensive maintenance agreements. The current slide, although somewhat busy, it's a sample of our customers which includes some of the most security conscious organizations around the globe. Many of which have been long-term users of our sensing and access control solutions, and more recently, our high security international logistics services. They span military, oil and gas, transport, and include some of the world's biggest system integrators. Now, focusing on the services division and our AVA global business, as it's called, it's the fast growing provider of secure international logistics for things like currency and precious metals. It's also very unique in the industry and it's based on a partner model for the in-country services. As a result of this, it has significantly lower fixed costs than traditional competitors in this space. And it's able to select the highest quality partners through a comprehensive quality assurance program. This model has supported significant growth in the past few years with a low capex and opex base. Now, Future Fiber Technology or FFT is both an innovator and a global leader in turning passive fiber optic cables, such as used uh, in data communications globally, into extremely sensitive and effective sensing devices for a range of applications and markets. Primarily deployed as an intrusion detection sensor for critical infrastructure, and especially around large sites like oil and gas refineries, airports, ports, and military sites, something you would have seen on the earlier customer slide. 
Uh, the intrusion sensing technology is suited to perimeters and we can put on the fence or bury it and we can use existing fibre that's already laid along pipelines or being used for data networks and turn those into a sensor. Uh, we're now extending into non-security applications such as condition monitoring sensing. I'll cover that shortly. So BQT Solutions, uh, it provides unique access control and smart locking systems for again, the high security applications. Now we're on the building, we're not on the perimeter or we're not in transit. They have both custom encryption as well as off the shelf solution for distribution. Uh, many of you will be aware of BQT's strong position with the Australian government and Department of Defence in which they have provided unique readers with custom encryption a number of times over the years. Let's now look at the, I'll now look at some of the highlights of the past financial year. So FY revenues uh, increased by 46% to just over 46 million with the technology division, division contributing over 21 million and services just over 25. And as you will see, both divisions experienced strong revenue growth. Uh, $6 million of net operating cash was generated. And the good thing is that the gross margins increased in that year by some 5% to 48% for the overall business. Um, the, the group maintains a strong competitive advantage due to our product range, blue chip customer base, and the team's deep industry and sector knowledge. We're also pursuing new markets globally, both through our experienced sales team and through new partnerships. Um, during the last financial year, the group increased revenues and gross margins, but also managed uh, in reduction of operating expenditure. The gross margin increases underpin, underpin what we call a high scalable cost base with a land and expand revenue model. And some of the key points, technology divisions gross margin was 75%. That's BQT and FFT, while the services division gross margin was 25%. FFT's gross margin showed a year on in year improvement from 67 to 79%, which was driven largely by the Indian Ministry of Defence contract, which I'll cover shortly. Uh, the, the group reduced operating expenditure assisted by the consolidation of BQT manufacturing into New Zealand during the year. The charts on the right show the split by segment of FY 2020 revenue in EBITDA with AVA Global, the services division, the largest revenue part of the group, but uh, FFT, the largest EBITDA contributor to the group with its high margins. Uh, as, as can be seen, FY 2020 revenue growth was not a surprise and was a continuation of the circa 50% year-on-year revenue growth achieved by AVA Global over the past four years. What was particularly impressive was a large improvement in profit, which came from a number of factors. Firstly, management's focus on operating expenditure. That was combined with the improved gross margin from services and the high margin major licensing and product contracts from the technology division. Um, the balance sheet at the end of June 30 showed the company had no external debt or borrowings, borrowings and had a cash balance of 7.7 .7 million at 30th of June or more than double the prior period. And I'll update on first quarter shortly. Um, you'll note that in addition to investors taking notice of ABA Group's performance uh, recently, we've also been noticed by the AFR and Financial Times. One of the contributors last year and will be for the next year and going on was the Indian Ministry of Defence contract for FFT. Uh, this was a result of uh, significant effort over a number of years and not only was a contract a milestone for FFT in terms of scale, but it also demonstrates new capabilities for, for mil fulfillment and licensing of our intrusion detection technology. At a glance, the contract involves large scale supply of FFT secure link technology to protect more than 40,000 kilometres of data communication cables for the Indian Ministry of Defence. This time FFT licensed the technology to an in-country manufacturing partner, SFO. The total contract value through the rollout phase is US 11.9 million. Um, we recognised about 4.8 last financial year. 
We, in addition to that, we expect revenue from the subsequent seven years of spares and maintenance contracts with currently an estimated value of an additional 0.4 million. Uh, this contract establishes FFT technology in the growing cybersecurity market and the fulfillment and licensing model offers a low working capital, low risk, high margin, go to market approach for the future. FFT has expanding capabilities and growing interest in extending its technology into new applications. And Aura IQ that I'll be discussing shortly is one of those applications that's being actively promoted. In addition, international early stage uh, sales and trials for road, rail and power cable monitoring applications. And what is exciting about these early stage investments is they all provide over additional growth paths for the future years. So Aura IQ was uh, commercially launched last year and this sensing technology uniquely monitors conveyor health using FFT's Aura AI2 fiber optic technology. It uses advanced signal processing algorithms, predictive analytics, cloud-based analytics to diagnose, track and report the progressive state of wear of conveyor rollers. It was developed in partnership with Queensland-based mining research company Mining3 Mining with a solution developed uh, and funded uh, with the support of the global mining industry, including you know, Anglo-American Vale and the Australian Coal Industry Research Program. We have three proof of value trials uh, successfully completed and six currently underway. And the impressive results achieved are now moving those proof of value trials into full commercial proposals. Okay, let me just uh, move this. Right. So the, the total market opportunity for RIQ, uh, we see it as more than $300 million and we have a current sales pipeline, well over 50 sites that has an estimated revenue of more than $50 million over the first three years of deployment. Although revenue will start as a combined capital expenditure and operating expenditure model, we're planning to migrate to a full OPEX models, which is uh, in line with a full uh, service as a, a self as a service cloud monitoring and analytics. So we'll get a license fee based on per meter of monitored conveyor per month. Um, we also believe that we'll be adding to that value by providing new uh, data analytics and new capabilities to that platform over time, which again will give us an uplift in the recurring revenue. Um, in a recent proof of value trial, there was a great case study done which um, showed Aura IQ, you know, reducing the conveyor downtime, prolonging roller life, increasing the conveyor utilization. And, and this particular operator um, showed the return on investment was less than six months for this technology. CQT, uh, its focus for the year ahead is the fulfillment of the large Australian defence uh, contract for access control readers, but more importantly, expanding its locking sales and distribution agreements that it signed with Acer Abloy and Dorma Macava, who are the two biggest locking distributors in the world. And they will take BQT locking solutions into new markets and territories. Uh, for the reader distributors, they've got a new uh, preferred partner program, which again will give the distributors greater capability in terms of the customization of the readers, which, uh, which will be needed to serve their customers that require unique and specific solutions. Uh, in terms of Ava Global, um, we see significant market share upside with the $200 million currently addressable market. And the services division are also looking to leverage recent market consolidation with the two largest providers, that is Brinks and G4S merging, uh, as customers tend to spread their secure logistics spread, uh, spend over two or three providers, they'll now need to adjust their weightings and uh, that should be to the benefit of Ava Global. We also anticipate ongoing growth from existing customers with increase of their logistics spenders, we get a greater share of that and the expansion of our presence in Latin America through strategic partnerships. 
Um, we're very confident appointment of a general manager in Asia and specialist client sector consultants is going to deliver immediate returns as well. And they're also exploring some M&A opportunities in Europe and the Americas. Uh, just noting that the impact of COVID-19 on the airline industry has resulted in a restriction in capacity, uh, an increase in costs, but that actually has worked towards the AVA global model and has actually contributed in their margins and a little bit to their growth. So looking to the growth strategy uh, ahead. So we've already exceeded the previous forecast for Q1 revenues. Uh, we had an increase of 73% to $17 million on the previous corresponding period. And that is despite the COVID-19 delays to underlying technology sales. We're clearly well-funded for growth with cash at bank at $11.6 million as the 30th of September, noting that we've since paid a special dividend of one cent per share to shareholders. EBITDA for Q1, uh, FY2021, improved by some 522% over the same period last year to 7.7 million with uh, big contributions from the Indian MOD project and for BQT, the Australian Department of Defence contracts. Um, I should note these are unaudited numbers at the moment. Um, in, in terms of new solutions, well, Aura IQ has that $50 million in qualified sales opportunities I mentioned earlier. Um, we're also anticipating strong interest in the new multi-year comprehensive maintenance agreement which is at reaching out to that large install base I mentioned earlier. Uh, and it has a number of FFT customers already signing up for those uh, recurring revenue contracts. So our, our strategy remains on track to support ongoing strong revenue growth in the current financial year and, and beyond. So to finish up, Ava Group's outlook strong. Uh, world leading technology is now installed in more than 70 countries with a blue chip user base. We have a strong intellectual uh, portfolio with clear cost of ownership performance advantages. We've effectively managed and continue to manage the COVID-19 related challenges impacting the past quarters. Um, global security concerns continue to drive demand for our technology and services with cybersecurity at the forefront of government interests. So industry fundamentals underpin continued growth along with the sales pipeline and what we hope new and recurring business from the large install base. Obviously our services division also has access to an ever-growing addressable client spend. So with the improved gross margins, right size cost base, I'm confident Ava Group's performance will continue to improve, building on the strong lift in revenues and earnings and supported by the company's multiple growth initiatives and plans. So that concludes my uh, presentation on the AVA group. Um, we'll have plenty of time for questions, so I'll hand back to Laura. Thank you very much, Rob. A couple of questions for you. Is there hardware required for the software to work efficiently? And, and on that, is there any hardware revenue included in your results? Well, yes, it's quite interesting. So services, obviously, AVA Global, that is services. So there's no hardware in, involved with that. For technology, yes, there is hardware. And I mentioned the Aura AI platform, that's a hardware photonics platform for FFT. It underpins much of the future growth and current growth for that particular group, as it is the core solution that we use for all our sensing applications, both security and the new condition monitoring one. Um, the only difference is we're adding a recurring revenue and services on top of that, with obviously a recurring revenue from uh, maintenance services that we're offering to our large install base. That's still quite early, but also the Aura IQ product solution for conveyor belts, um, that will have a small CapEx component with it. The hardware goes with each conveyor, but as I said, the revenue that we get from that will actually be on more a recurring revenue model. The early stage sales will have a bit of CapEx with it. BQT, um, it's really essentially hardware revenue um, at this moment. They do do some software work for custom encryption, but very much dominated by the hardware or capital equipment sales. But with distribution and a growing distribution revenue that we expect from the major distributors, that should be a, grow to be a very reasonable run rate business over the coming years. 
Rob, could you maybe um, clarify the Aurora AI pipeline? Is it 50 million revenue um, in the first three years? We've got, we've got a question around, around the technicals of that. Yeah, absolutely. So in size in the pipeline, it's, it's interesting when you've got a recurring revenue uh, model. So you've got to put a time frame around it. Um, and so really, yes, for a, each of those opportunities, if signed up over, over a three year period, the total would come to something around $50 million. So that obviously you can do the maths to figure out what the annual recurring revenue opportunity will be. Uh, that's when we go to the full SAS model uh, where everything's charged on a full uh, meter per month uh, basis. Uh, so the longer the conveyor, the more the cost will be for the data. Could you speak to uh, speak about the pipeline of opportunities for the perimeter intrusion and lock businesses? Okay, so the lock business um, is a distribution business, so it doesn't have a, uh, a lot of actually large individual sales pipeline because you go through distributors, it's very much a run rate business. The, uh, the, the reader business is, is quite different. It has a combination of distribution and obviously custom. At the moment, custom uh, readers is somewhat dominating it and they actually have uh, a pipeline mainly with large government customers, with large international banks um, and where their position is quite unique in what they can do in terms of delivering custom solutions and also giving those customers the ability to migrate from one encryption standard, one key card technology to newer ones which have higher security. So they actually have a good run rate business that is almost recurring in that these departments and companies come back to BQD, BQT for all their refresh business. An example would be the $3.4 million Department of Defence contract. That was really to replace readers that the group had provided a number of years ago. So that will continue those sorts of cycles. For FFT, yeah, it's uh, historically in the security side is somewhat project based historically. So it's got a strong pipeline in the security space globally with customers across the world, many of which you would have seen in that original slide about our clients. So there are projects ongoing for new sites. There's upgrades ongoing for existing sites. Um, and yeah, they tend to be within government, within you know, oil and gas, uh, airports, ports. Again, very strong pipeline of opportunities in front of us there. The size of it typically is in the order of hundreds of millions of dollars um, that we have rolling in front of us. Um, obviously, we're very fix focused on the um, on the ones we can obviously influence and control more aggressively to bring to closure. Not reflected in our pipeline at the moment uh, in any significant way is the condition monitoring applications outside of the Aura IQ, the conveyor belt, where we've had a very focused program, but we are working on some partnership programs for our technology to be taken to large customers through partners that are already well entrenched with those customers. That means we don't have to invest in the sales effort or the sales team. And it means that really we get, a, get revenue from a very low cost base. And we're starting to see a bit of that occurring in power cable. In fact, we've been receiving some recent orders for power cables. And again, all through the efforts of our partner and all just utilizing the investments we've done in the Aura AI platform for all the other applications. Earlier this year, Rob, um, the, your group did talk about a major BQ, BQT multi-sale of Lock and the distributor, and the end customer um, seems to be finalising the package. Could you please give us an update, or any update you may have on that front? No, uh, yeah, good question. So yes, there is, through one of our major international distributors, they have been working on a very large program, very large number of sites, very large number of uh, locking doors using one of BQT's unique locks for that particular program. Um, we believe it's all well positioned, but it has gone a bit slower as they have A, had some issues with uh, not our technology, but another component of the technology. So there's actually three elements to it, uh, in addition, or three, three elements, including the locks. So there's two other technologies not supplied by BQT. One of those, as we understand it, is actually being re-looked at for an alternative. So that's the main reason for, for um, that program 
still going on. It's still not stopped. It's still there. It's still being worked. COVID-19 has had a minor impact in it as well. Um, in fact, the distributors, uh, Asa, Abloy and uh, Dormacart, normally through the year, they'd be going to the major security shows, you know, doing all the announcements of new products um, to all of their partners across, you know, the US and Europe. Obviously, there's been no security trade show, so it's slowed down a bit the rollout of some of the uh, the locks that um, that BQT have provided to them. But we're confident we'll pick up soon going forward. There was a, there was a note about um, uh, some there's some protection of your Indian debt potentially going bad. It, it not um, notwithstanding that partial risk protection. Could you perhaps provide your assessment of risks to not collecting this debt on time? Or what can you give some context to that Indian debt for us, I suppose? Well, the Indian MOD project is obviously the big one in terms of um, it, it's it's a sizable contract. And although we don't actually have any investment or really investment or costs associated with it, so there's no cost that we have to concern be concerned about, but obviously um, payment. Um, is obviously one of the key issues. So, so we protect it in a couple of ways. Um, first of all, our contract with our partner is in US dollars. So we've mitigated to some degree any risk in, in Indian rupees or whatever. That's the risk that our partner has to undertake. Um, secondly, we, um, we can recognize revenue when um, they build a unit because they can't operate a unit without us issuing a license key. So when they've completed the unit ready for testing, they have to provide us with a piece of information that we uh, we get from uh, the particular machine and then we can issue them a license key. So we have very good control over the manufacturing processes and good insights and visibility. Then um, in terms of payment, to actually protect our payment, we have a US $2 million bank guarantee that we have um, um, sitting in an Australian bank that is there if payment is not made on time. And payment, the trigger for payment is actually upon shipment of the, the machine. So again, we have full visibility to all the testing that's done and the shipment of, uh, of the product. And so therefore we know exactly when the funds are due. Um, obviously payments have been made on time. The partner we have is very professional, does a lot of contract manufacturing for a number of international companies. They're well funded, and so we haven't seen any issues. But certainly, the bank guarantee is the ultimate protection that we've put in place. Possibly to end with today, Rob, uh, do you have any plans to transition your new FFT revenues to to a software as a service model? Well, as I mentioned in in uh, Aura IQ, definitely. Um, in terms of the security applications, there's a little bit more resistance to a SaaS type operation operating full time for a security sensor within a secure site. So there is opportunity um, for some enhanced services that we can provide on an annual basis by, by providing new software upgrades on an annual basis. So we cyber issue and test our software every release and we can sell that as an ongoing annual fee to upgrade every year, all those installed systems. Uh, still, the initial purchase will be a capital expenditure, but on top of that, we can provide comprehensive maintenance agreements to give them annualised cyber assured, assured software that they can overlay. And we are looking at some additional enhancements in terms of remote monitoring and remote support. That means we can do some in-depth diagnostics and support activities without having uh, to go to site. And we have some additional intellectual property that we're working on at the moment that would add additional features and that recurring annual update to be even more attractive in terms of performance enhancement. So definitely increases in, in, in recurring revenues is a big focus of the company. Thanks, Rob. And that's all we have time for in this session, but any questions that weren't addressed by Rob will be forwarded to him and the company to answer. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Laura. Thanks very much.